Hello, welcome to my studio. Uh, welcome to my channel. I'm Donna Cato. And today I'm going to teach you how to make very simple ornaments. Now last year we did the Peace Dove and that was done with um, Starry Night Canes. Well, this is quite a bit simpler, I would have to say. And it carries the same sentiment, which is my wish for peace in 24. Didn't work out too well in 23, but I am an optimist at heart. So anyway, we're gonna be making these ornaments. You know what I like about them? I like that they're, that they're very light. You know, it's a big look, but they don't weigh much. I have in my life made polymer clay ornaments by covering glass balls. And, you know, they've been fun to do and I enjoy them. But, you know, they end up usually for me being quite heavy. And so the branches of the trees go or they dip down. And, um, and so I would much rather make something that's light and doesn't stress out the tree. Right? Okay. So anyway, here we have, oh, just a selection of them. Now, just because I put my message on certainly doesn't mean you have to. So here's one that doesn't have any letters on it at all. And uh, you guys, you guys know, so I know you'll have plenty of ideas. All right, so I guess that's it for my introduction today. I think it's time to start making some ornaments. So let's talk a little bit about this uh, foil that I'm using. First of all, all of these, you know, these thin strips, they were actually purchased uh, and, and described as uh, foils for nail art, okay? And that's why they're this very thin, strippy shape. <laughs> all right. Now, there is nothing about these that... Mm, would require that they be heat stable, right? Because that's not the way they're used. You're not gonna put it on your finger and then stick your finger in the in the oven. So it, it, they really don't have to be. And so when I first started using them, I took this beautiful gold and used it. And I have a ton of it here. See this roll? It's beautiful, isn't it? Beautiful. Well, I did it and I put it in the oven and it turned into sort of a silvery color. So it's not really heat stable. Now that is not to say that all of them are not heat stable because some of them are. For instance, this red and this green, that's exactly the way they look when you look at them like this. But there are others that change, okay? So I used something like, where is it? And then some just don't transfer hardly at all. See this blue? It was a mess. This was also one that was hard to do. So, you know, it's a good thing they're not terribly expensive, but you're going to have to do some experimentation if you use them. All right? Okay. Now, the way they transfer onto clay is the same as I'm going to show you because I did find something that uh, that holds the gold, and it's this. And on Timu, they called it heat transfer foil. Heat transfer foil. And I will put the link down below. But once again, you have to test it because I went ahead and, excuse me, purchased these thinking that they were the same thing. All right, nice color, beautiful color. Unfortunately, it doesn't transfer worth beans. And you know what, when I felt it, I thought, oh, this feels a little bit different. There was something a little bit different. It is a chemical coating on Mylar, as are the other ones. And I can tell because I can scrape it off like that. But this is a little resistant to sticking to the polymer. Okay, as is this. 
So I don't know what I'm going to do with these. They weren't very expensive, so maybe they will go in the craft materials bin when I move. I'm going to try to move. Okay, so let me set those aside. I am going to go ahead and use this gold. Okay, this is the gold that I bought from Timu and I tested and it holds. What you see here is what you get after it's cured in the oven. These are some green pieces. <laughs> All right, now before I use it though, what I want to do is take this stamp I also bought this from Timu. Yeah. I know some of you are like, oh, don't buy from Timu. I'm sorry. Now, I'm not a very good stamper. I mean, I, I will admit that to you. I'll admit that to anybody. So what I'm going to do is take and put my clay, which has been rolled through setting number two, on the stamp. I'm going to dust the back with some cornstarch and then I'm going to take the boss and I'm going to roll it. The boss. The boss. Okay, some of you may know who Teresa Salgado is. She has a company called Tiny Pandora and she sells this. The boss is fantastic. Look at this thing. It's so big. And this was a gift from Lynn Taylor. Thank you, Lynn. I'm gonna roll my sleeves up. Okay, here we go. <laughs> All right, I'm rolling, I'm rolling, I'm rolling. Oh. I didn't soften this clay, probably. I could have, it would have been a little easier to roll into the stamp if I had softened it a bit, but I didn't. Okay, not a problem. It just means I have to push harder. Ta-ta. Okay, so, you know what? That's okay. I could have pressed deeper in here maybe, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with it. I'm going with it. And I do like this stamp because it's kind of small details. I like it. Yeah, okay. Now, I'm going to take my little brass rod and just roll it lightly to flatten the surfaces. Just flatten them a bit. All right, now let's take this, put it on here. And for this particular if you're going to do this, it really is easier to use something like a credit card. Like so. And whip it across. Like this. And, you know, Nancy Banks. Once again, Nancy Banks. Nancy Banks. This actually, I consider the mother of transfer foil techniques in clay. Yeah. Before she came along, we had no idea. We thought, this, what is this stuff? It's made for t-shirt transfers. What are you doing? And then she showed us and it was like, no way. No way. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, you ready? I'm ready. Now I'm going to just grip a corner and I'm just going to pull it away fast, like ripping off a Band-Aid. And that is pretty cool. Now, the coolness doesn't end there. Look, I can take this and put it on more clay and transfer the pattern. I love it. I'm gonna put this aside someplace special. Okay. Now I'm going to flatten it a bit more.
And there are parts that I wish I had hit, like these little rings here, but I didn't. I didn't. Okay, let's roll this through the pasta machine. Now, I had rolled it through. I'm going to roll it through setting two again. Okay. Just to see. So that's setting two. Now I'm going to roll. See, I rolled through setting two this way. I'm going to place this edge on the rollers and roll through. Very good. And you know what? I think I'm going to stop here. Okay. It's not perfectly flat, but I think it's okay. If I roll it through again, I'll put this edge on the rollers, but... Okay, I'm going to do it. So I'm resetting my machine to setting four. I'm going to put this edge on the rollers this time so the pattern will spread that way. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, excellent. I like it. I like this stamp. Okay, so now what size ornament shall we make? This is good. I can make a big ornament and it's not going to be heavy, which is also a plus. Maybe I'll cut there. I could do two. Oops. Oopsie. Oopsie. Do I want it there or how about how about right there? Okay. I hate to waste good pattern, but I'm just gonna set this aside. I might think of something else to do. Oh, maybe I'll make a kimono pin. I'm gonna make a kimono pin with all the leftover scraps. Okay. Doink 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 doink. All right. These are ready to be put on my little form. I'll be back. Okay, guys, so um, this is actually a pickup shot. You know, I did the whole class and then I figured out an easier way of doing this. And so that's what I'm going to do. An easier way of putting the whole thing together. So you probably recognize this. This is the opposite. Remember when I stamped into the clay and uh, transferred and this is what was left. So let's transfer this back onto some clay right now. Okay. Yes. So this happens to me sometimes. I um I do something and it's fine and and then I sit back and I think about it for a moment. And I realize that there is a much simpler way of doing it. So I have to show you the simpler way. Mm -hmm. That means that I have to reshoot it. All right, so I'm just transferring, just warming this up. Mm. My clay's been rolled to setting number three. I think that's fine, three or four. I just want a medium setting or a medium thin setting. That's all. All right, so let's just pull this off. One, two, three. There we go. That's fine. Left some behind. Now, if you want to, you can just, of course, put it back down. Match up the pattern again. Put it down. Sometimes it isn't. <laughs> the easiest. This just wants to stick to the whole thing. So anyway, I, I think it's fine. That's what I left on the mylar. Okay, so let's just pick this up. And I am going to cut and make the ornament this one. Okay, so I've got when I scoot this over, I might be able to get two out. Just like that. And let me get this one too. Mm 
All right. Now let's pull this up and set this aside. Okay. So the harder way was to take these, put them on the form, and then put a strip down and then write piece and then have to fiddle with the spacing of the letter. You know what? It's easier if you take this and all this is is this transferred onto black. This I think is rolled through setting four. It's a little bit thinner. Here are my letters. So let us write piece. Let's write And when I do this, it's easier for me. If the letter is actually stuck to my work surface, I take the blade and I pick it up like that. Now I'm going to pull this in just a bit like so. P. Let's grab an E. I'm gonna need two E's. Yes, I did it kind of the hard way. It wasn't terribly hard. I will say that it wasn't like, ooh, the difference isn't that great, but this is easier. P E P P. Okay, P E A. Okay, stick. My hands have lots of clay on them on them and that's kind of why the clay wants to stick to me. See? And then one last E. Okay. All right, now I'm just going to cut the strip. Yeah, so much easier than the other way. Now let us just take one and center this strip. Find the place where you want it. Maybe like so. It's gonna be a lot of gold on here. Lots of gold. You know, I think I'll use my scalpel and just try to follow the curve of the disc. Let's get rid of that. Try to do the same thing on this side. A little more difficult because I'm right-handed. Okay, that's good. Now, let me get my form. Isn't that funny? I don't have my form with me. I'm out of form. So here is the small fat daddy-o. Okay, now I'm going to pick this up and stick it to the form. See, the other way I was doing all the work on the form. It was much more difficult than this, which is so easy to do now. Like so. Mm -hmm. Lots of gold. Maybe I should have made the band silver. Well, too late now. 
Okay, let's pick out a few of these. Do I want this big or small? Hmm. I'll have choices. This is a good size. So I want this to arc that way and let us put the hanger this way here. And the hardest part of this process is actually finding the opposite point, like the perfect opposite point, you know, right down the middle. Very hard for me to find the middle. Okay. Boink. All right. Now I'm going to replace these. with two of these. Whoops. Whoopsie, get out. There. Okay. Mm -hmm. da -da 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 -da. Smaller ones. And this time I decided to make this instead of just drilling a hole for the dangle. Okay, I need a smaller one. Let me try to find the middle. Bonk, like so. <laughs> like so. Let's remove them. And now this you must do while it's on, on the form. And that is, if you're going to put little crystals in, you have to do it while it's on the form. Because you can't, if you do it flat and then you try to move it, the crystals will all drop out. Yeah, they do. They do, they do, they do. So let's see what we're going to use here. Da -da. Da, da, da. That's too big. I'll use. <gasps> oh, I caught it on my knees. Phew. Thank heaven. Okay, let's put one there. And I'll just show you how to do one. Take it out. And I'm just going to use a ball stylus. Pick up a little bit of liquid, drop it in the hole. Pick up the crystal and drop it in the hole. Come on. Yeah, this one is, this little cutter is just a little small for these crystals, but it's, it's not too bad. Okay, now I need to get rid of some excess clay right there. Excess liquid, I think. So this is just a clean brush, like so. See? And so you can proceed and put as many as you like or as few. You can change up sizes, of course. Maybe the next few should be the smaller size, then I even have smaller ones. And yes, I even have tinier ones than that. So I will continue and get these little crystals in and then I will return. So I put all the crystals in. <laughs> now, when you're selecting these cutters, it's really good. If you can find exactly the same size, that's great. If you can't find exactly the same size, look for one that is a bit smaller, not bigger, just a bit smaller, okay? All right. And the reason for that is because we're going to be backing the whole thing with black. And maybe in this case, it won't, wouldn't much matter if you could see the, uh, the backing, the black backing. But sometimes it does matter if you're working with a color, something like that. You, you don't want to see that thick black around the crystal that you will see because that's the backing color, okay? 
All right, well, I hope that was clear. This is going in the oven. So they're both done. I made the second one with a wider banner or band across. Okay, so they're going in the oven now. All right. These are cured. It's time to just pop them off of the form, which is easy enough, you see. Now, I cured these for about mm, probably 20, 25 minutes. And so, you know, I didn't cure them that long because for one thing, I am going to have to back them next and cure them again. So, see the surface of the black is just a little bit dull. It's not shiny. Well, that shininess is one way you can tell with uh, Cato Poly Clay that the clay is cured, really like cured hard. Sometimes you need that, sometimes you don't. Okay, so I've got this clay and I'm gonna make this thin because the next thing we have to do is we have to back these. So I'm gonna roll these, roll this sheet through like setting three first. And let's finish off at setting five. Hmm. What did I pick up in there? Oh look, I picked <laughs> I picked up a jump ring. <laughs> and it's round. I have absolutely no idea where that came from. Okay. A mystery. It's a mystery jump ring. Okay. Now I'm gonna texture as I like to do at the same time. Clay's feeling just a little bit soft to me, like a little bit stickier than normal because I did add the blackout. So because the clay to me feels a little sticky, I'm a little concerned about it sticking in the sponge. So instead of rolling through five, I'm gonna back it down to four. So this was through five. And when I push them together through the machine, they will go through at four. And I think that is going to help in terms of any possible clay sticking in the sponge. Okay, there we go. Now I will repeat the process again for the other one. We'll just do one now. All right, so the easiest way I have found to deal with this is to actually select a cutter. and make sure the cutter is big enough from top all the way to the hanging loop. This one has black clay on it. Let me get rid of that and push up my sleeves. Oh my goodness, it's cold here. It is cold. And I also have this guy, so you know what, this guy, I'm going to cut another circle out, like so. So that's for that one. This is for this one. And I have to roll one more, of course. I would make one more for the other large, large one. I got two to do. All right, so let's look at these. I like them. I like them. But let me tell you. I think I like this one better. You see, I like the combined silver and gold. I think that the combined silver and gold is better from a design perspective because the letters in the word piece are white. This looks better to me than this. Now, what could I have done here? Perhaps if I had made the banner silver, just silver foil instead of the gold, or this color, which was gold that no, this was actually, yeah, this was ri the original gold that turned to silver. So perhaps that would have actually been a better choice than the actual gold. This gold that I knew would be gold. Okay. So I think next time I'm going to mix metals. I think the silver and the gold together with the black and white letters actually looks better. Okay. I'm glad we cleared that up. 
<sighs> of course, maybe I'll try colors. Like the reds and the greens. Okay, now I'm just going to take liquid clay and just spread it all across the back. Now be careful around here because that hanging loop is just kind of sitting there and I could pretty easily uh, doing, knock it off, which I do not want to do. Okay, come on. Yeah, it's cold down here in my studio, my basement studio. And so my liquid is kind of cold too. It's like motor oil <laughs> in the winter time. Okay. Doink. Okay, good deal. Now I'm gonna take this disc and I'm going to align it to the bottom. There we go, I found the bottom. And just work it up to the top. Like so. Just pat it like that. All right, now I'm going to take my blade and just take it and trim away the clay from the perimeter. Okay, so let me just trim around here. I think you saw how I just, <laughs> how I dealt with the, uh, with the hanger. Some might say a bit of a risky move. All right, so let's cut this dying just and I put my finger behind the loop so the clay doesn't move because it could slide to one one side or another and then I would have a hanging loop that didn't have clay covering its total surface easy enough to avoid. Just take your fingers and put them behind. Or take a finger. Can't take them all. And that's, that's good. Now I'm going to take my acupuncture needle. I think I said this in some class. You know, when I first started using these, you could do a Google and you could Google acupuncture needle and all these acupuncture needles would come up. Well, not anymore. Now you have to have a license to buy this. I might have said this before too. I mean, a license to buy this, but in some places you don't need a license to have a gun. Uh, that just doesn't make sense to me. Anyway, okay, there you go. Now, let me put my signature on the back. This is ready to be put back on the form and be cured again. Okay, signature canes for life. Of course, I'm not that young. Some of you might be young enough that 
you would have to make more signature canes. I'm just not that young anymore. I'm an old lady. Oops. Oh, I'm an old lady. I don't know when that happened or how it happened, but it happened. Mm -hmm. hmm. Am I a little off? Oh, I am. Is it, does it bother me? A bit, a bit. So this one, I th think. <sighs> okay, I'm just off. All right, so how do we get this back on the form? Actually, it's pretty easy. The clay is going to want to stick. So let's try to get the two sort of up in this area like that. This I got a little dirty. It's got a little extra clay or liquid. Oh, is that where I put the liquid? Yeah, so that's just a little bit of liquid clay on there that can easily be scraped off like so. And to clean it, I can just take a little bit of alcohol on a paper towel, clean it off. Here, I'm going to move that so I don't ruin that. Okay. And I will clean that off with the alcohol and then put the two back on. So let me cover this one. And then I will show you before it goes in the oven. So here is another ornament that I made. And I think you can see how this is made. So first of all, I, um, I took my sheet, this sheet for instance, and I just cut it like that. Then I took the gold, like where's the gold? Anyway, the gold, and I placed a strip in the middle. I put them back together. Then I, then I placed a strip in the middle, and then I, anyway, it's a puzzle, right? And if you put the X down first, you can put the four pieces from this sheet together. Then I took another, and I took a square cutter, this guy, and I cut a gold. I cut out the middle of here, replaced it, and then did the rest, you know, putting a crystal in and these little lines. All they are, are you know, I took a needle. I took this needle and I just went er, 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 like that. So I just made a pattern that way. Okay, this one's cute, smaller. Now, one thing I didn't tell you uh, with the last one, <laughs> And I don't think it's going to be a problem because I did a pretty good job of pressing the clay up against the back. But if you have your acupuncture needle, please use it. Da, 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 like so. All right, signature cane, and we are ready to cure this one. All right. Okay, so I don't know if you can tell, but this was cured on a much smaller bowl, and that's why it's more curved. The other one was more flat. I like this. I kind of wish I had, cur I had cured the others uh, on a smaller bowl because they are a bit flat. All right, so let me cure this one. They're out of the oven, and uh, now what I have to do is sand this edge because I'd like it to feel better than it does. See? A little rough looking. Here's what it looks like after you sand it. It's a little better. So let me just take my Auburnette P120 and just sand around both of the pieces and then we are ready to talk about dangles. Yeah. Dangles. Okay, so this won't take long. And we are almost done.
So you can see on this one, I have just dropped a big glass-based pearl and a, uh, a bead cap. I like pearls a lot. I do. And I have a lot of these, and they are humongous. Big. I don't know, maybe 16 millimeter. They're, they're good size. Now, I also happen to have these crystals. And I like the crystals a lot. I've had them for a very long time. And I am never going to use them in earrings or anything. So I might as well, I could certainly dangle this, these, from the bottom of this as well. Now, the good thing about them is, you know, when the light catches them, they are lead crystal. Um, they, they really sparkle. The thing about these, though, is that they have no surface coating, like an AB coating or, you know, a comet argent light coating or anything so uh, a lot of the time you look at them and if there's no light on them you don't see them yeah it's true and these are drilled they're not drilled top to bottom they're drilled side to side now I think that if I chose to use this it, this would be fine I just took my um, head pin strung it through made an angle like that and I think that will be fine too yeah, I don't think it'll fall off, especially since at the top I'll do a closed loop. Okay, so let us do, let's say a pearl here, and then I'll use this guy here. You can use anything. Tassel would be cute. I don't happen to have any tassels right now, but it would be cute. Now, if you look at the hole and the thickness, I know that I can't make a little teeny tiny <laughs> uh, eye. That's what the word I was looking for was eye. The eye has to be fairly large because the eye is going to have to go through here, through the, that double thickness, the thickness of the clay. Uh, so first let's make the neck. I'm just going to take and put that down. Bend this at a 90. Hello. Whoops. Little problem. Little problem. The hole is big. Bigger. Okay, so make sure that the hole, okay, so the hole was bigger on one side, and now it won't go through there, so let me just remove this. And shall I try stringing through the smaller hole, or shall I look for a different one with a smaller hole, or the other option, and one that I fear I'm going to have to take, is I'm going to have to use another kind of head pin. Okay, so let me get that and I'll be back. So I cruised through my box of head pins and I found this. This one's nice. It's got a little crystal in it. And this one has a knot on the end. And of course, these are big enough. This pearl's not going to slide off. Okay, so there's that one. Now, this is fine, but you know, it's pointed straight down. You don't even really see it. And yeah, I have enough to use it. I wouldn't mind using it. Now let's look at this guy. This guy, once again, can use him. Hmm. Decisions, decisions, decisions. Okay, I'll just use this guy. All right, so let's get back to where we were. First, I have to make a neck. So the neck is going to be basically the width of my tool. I'm going to bend it at a 90 degree angle like that. So Now, this is where that larger eye comes in. Most of the time I like making them very tiny because they don't really, the eyes don't have to be huge. This time it's going to be pretty big. So I'm going to take my tool position it about halfway because the closer you get to the tip the smaller the diameter of course right right so let's just take this and then I reposition because I want to make a loop see I've made a loop so I got the neck like that now, it's a little off-center. Now, the goal is to have that loop centered over the neck. So, let's just recenter it. Re 
like that. Now that is going off toward, you know, outer space, but that doesn't really matter. What matters is that the neck is there and perfectly positioned over the neck is a loop. I'll open it a bit. Let's thread this on. Boom. Very good. Now this is where you need two tools. I'm going to take this one and I'm just going to flatten. Okay. Whoops. A little hard to get to. I'll get it. I'll get it. I'll get it. Uh, you know what? You're bugging me, buddy. So I'm gonna just bend you down. I had to bend him down because I couldn't get my tool in. All right, now I got my tool in. And you can see that my pliers are now gripping both sides of the loop. Okay, I'm gonna switch hands. Take another pliers. Grab the end of the plier and wrap the end of the wire around the neck. Okay. There we go. And that's P-I-R-F-I-C-T. Perfect. Okay, now let me cut away the excess. Let me cut away the tail. Okay, and I am done. I have done it. Oh, these are a little old. The plating is coming off of these little guys. They're very old. Does it matter for this? No. So I can feel free to use all of these for my ornaments. Well, these guys with the plating that's coming off. All right, so there is one with pearl. Now, let us use this guy. Okay. So first I'm going to make my neck and it's going to be a little bit higher because I'm going to probably have to reposition and pull the neck over, centering it over the crystal. Let me go even a little higher. Now the thing about working with crystals this way is that they're extremely brittle. So if you bend your wire just the wrong way, bing, a little piece of the crystal is going to fly off. It's going to break. So you have to be a little bit careful. Okay, so let's make the neck like so. Actually, I'm just going to make my 90 degree bend. This isn't going to be the easiest thing I've done today because this keeps swiveling. Now, I'm going to put my, my pliers in about halfway as I did before. Then swing the end over like that. Now let's reposition. Take the wire, pull it over even further like that. Make sure that the hole is over. Now, da, 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 da. this might not be perfect, but okay, now let's thread this on. Then I'm going to take my pliers and grip both sides as I did before, like this. This wire is a lot softer, so... I will do this. Wrap it around the neck. I might have left a little too much that way. But we'll see. I probably did. Not too concerned about it, however. Okay. 
Now there's the crystal. It's kind of facing the wrong way, isn't it? Okay, so let's just take care of that. I just twisted it so that this is face forward. Maybe it didn't really make any difference. Now, if I want to center this over, let me put that there and let me just bend a bit this way. And it might not be the most perfect solution, but it is a solution. Now it's hanging below. If I did it again, I would make this this a, a bit shorter, but I don't see that it's that big a deal for this. I could be wrong. I could be wrong, or I can maybe fix it this way. Let's straighten this out like so and push it through just a bit. And this is where you have to be really careful because you don't want to lose. Bing! Okay, so I push the end through. Now, let me just push it up. Let me bring this one over. And that works too. That works too. Now, I was able to do it to do this without breaking the crystal because the wire I'm using is not very hard. It's rather soft. So if the wire you're using is rather soft, you can do this kind of thing and it's fine. You pull it out once a year, you put it on your tree, you put it back. And if you do this, what I've done here and here and here, you're not going to open your ornament box and find the ornaments and a bunch of pearls and crystals at the bottom of the box that fell off. Okay. So there we go. Aw. Makes me want a tree. Not really. I have two cats. I'm not sure how they would do with the tree. But I do like this. Okay. And. Haha. -ha. Look, I made a kimono. Now, I've decided I'm going to make, every time I make a class, whatever it is, I'm gonna to try to see if I can make a kimono. This is a kimono, this is a kimono made from the overprinting in the members' classroom, and this was the original one. So I've only really made two <laughs> this time. But I think these will be great. I don't know, you can hang them, so maybe I'll put them on my Christmas tree, if I ever have one. Okay. Hello everyone, Donna Cato here. Welcome to my channel and welcome to my studio and welcome to my class. Now, I can't believe it's been a year, but it has been. I don't know where the year went, but it sure did go. And last year, um, I did a piece of using Starry Night Canes. So this year, my holiday project are these very simple ornaments. The sentiment is the same. It has not changed. It's what most of us want and seems so very difficult to attain. But we keep trying. So that's what this class is. It's uh, actually a disc and what I like about these is that they're quite large, but they're also very light. I have in my life made Christmas ornaments by covering Christmas balls, and they tend to be really, really heavy. The ones I've made were quite heavy. Now, the good thing about them was, of course, if they dropped, they never broke. But uh, the bad thing is, you know, when you put like something that's almost a pound on a branch, well, that branch is going to nip. And, uh, and so I think that these are kind of a nice solution and they are quite easy to do. So I guess that's it. It's time to start making our little ornaments. So here we are at the end of class. And it took me 
five, probably six, seven, <laughs> to arrive at a simpler way for for them to be made. Yeah, it took me a while. Uh, you guys know me. I get stuck in a rut. And then it's really hard to get me out of the rut. Something has to kick me out or else I have to make like seven of the same thing before it occurs to me that there is a simpler way. And I did show you that simpler way. So I hope you've enjoyed this class. This is my, I guess this is my Christmas class. Last year was the dove, the peace dove. And this year is, well, these ornaments with basically the same message. So I hope you make them. I hope you enjoy them. And, uh, and on we go. This is Donna Cato, over and out.